guys, welcome back to Clan Brandalorian. I'm the Brandalorian, and let's get into the first and second episode of the Ahsoka breakdown and review. Let's get it. And before I get right into this, guys, Dave Filoni, thank you, man. Everything about episode one and two, the credits, the end credits, the scenes where they're just traveling through space, or just simply character dialogue. So Dave Filoni, thank you so much for genuine Star Wars content. Credits, Thrawn is being looked for and to bring back the Imperial Remnants. Ahsoka has imprisoned Morgan Elsbeth and learns of a new key for the sky map. This is more so the star map, but we will find out later in this video. The Rebels crew gets a ship in the sector, that of Jedi clearance, so this raises eyebrows. Captain Hale is like, well, what's going on? These Jedi, so they say, can't be real, and they are halted to see Morgan. They get a clearance code, they're able to get in, and then Balin kills Captain Hale, and then says, we are no Jedi. This weighs very heavy, just the first three minutes executed so well. And then Balin somewhat has a hallway scene, that of Darth Vader, and this gets him to release Morgan Elsbeth from her jail. As Morgan and Balin are walking down the hallway, she tells Balin that of Ahsoka Tano in reaching the map to Thrawn. Ahsoka then starts out on Arcana to receive the star map, then encountered by HK droids, Hu Yang picks up Ahsoka in the T-6 shuttle. So what happens here is Ahsoka goes down in a room of some areas that look very familiar, that of Jedi Fallen Order, but then after beating the HK battle droids, she then gets picked up by Hu Yang in the T-6 shuttle, and then they flee the planet. And then once on the T-6, Ahsoka and Hu Yang learn of Balin and Shin's attack and the release of Morgan Elsbeth. Hera and Ahsoka reunite in a good and comforting scene. This probably brought back everything for Rebels fans. This was a great heartwarming scene. As Ahsoka talks to Hera about the key, she does learn that there's a chance that Ezra is still out there and is alive. Hera didn't want to believe that Thrawn was still alive, but then again Ahsoka had to reassure her that hey, he's not gone yet. There's no proof that he's dead, but then Ahsoka tells Hera that she has heard whispers of Thrawn's return. A ceremony then is held on Lothal, and Sabine Wren is absent, of course, showing her very reckless and honorary ways. But then when she gets back to the Overlook, she does see a hologram of Ezra, basically bringing back some memories that she has between her and Ezra. Once Morgan Elsbeth shows that she's a night sister, Shin says, you're a witch, as Morgan then says, a survivor. This is crazy, you know? We get more in-depth Night Sisters and Night Brothers on Dathomir. Of course, from Jedi Fallen Order, some scenes in the Clone Wars with Asaz Ventress going back. And this is really cool that we get this in live action. This only adds so much significance to Morgan Elsbeth and the character itself. Shin is then mission to go to Lothal and to encounter Sabine Wren to kind of block her and to get the star map back. So then as Ahsoka asks, Hu Yang dissects Balin's skull and Shin Hati's lightsaber hilts to uncover Balin's identity. He had said that he had only seen one lightsaber hilt made of this quality and in this kind of style once. And then back at Sabine's place, she cracks the code on the star map and shows where Thrawn is. Some HK droids show up, Sabine's in trouble, she goes downstairs. Sabine then grabs Ezra's lightsaber. She does ignite it. They get into a lightsaber duel. You know, it shows how rusty Sabine is. This goes into Shin Hati definitely overpowering her and at the end strikes her through her side. She falls down. Ahsoka's running towards her. Shin Hati leaves. That's the episode. So with the first episode getting a recap there, I give this episode a 10 out of 10. Beautiful, beautiful artwork beautiful scenes the acting is impeccable and the overall written story i didn't see a single flaw this is great after seeing the first episode i was very excited with dave filoni and what he has done so this only gives me hope that the rest of the season is going to be great going into episode two toil and trouble the scene opens up with ahsoka tano tuning into sabine's dreams and can hear her thoughts she hears ezra she hears the lightsaber battle from the night before and she tells Sabine to wake up. Skip over to Balin and Shin meeting Morgan Elsbeth on Setos to see the star map opened with Night Sister magic. Morgan Elsbeth being a Night Sister using magic, this is awesome. Ahsoka then up in the hideout destroys the last droid that was hiding in Sabine's lookout, then takes the head back to Sabine to have her look at and mess with the memory circuit. 
to see if it remembers anything from seeing the star map in the lookout. Sabine then cracks the code, gets a little insight of what she had seen last night, and this gives them a clue to where they are. When Morgan Elsbeth has the star map opened, she can then tell Balin and Shin that she hears Thrawn speaking to her through time. It's kind of muffled and chopped only because the way he's speaking to her, going through all that rough and tragic galaxy that's between the two, it's very rough for a lot of the transmissions to get back in one piece. Then we learn of the Eye of Scion. It's a new construction by Morgan Elsbeth, ultimately built to bring Thrawn back through space. And I think this is the only way that Thrawn is able to get back to the galaxy where Morgan Elsbeth is. It seems more of like a hyperspace drive that is able to pull ships straight through, kind of bending the universe in a way, maybe to get them there quicker and a lot more safely. But we will see in the next couple of episodes where that goes. Balin then sends Shin Hati to Corellia, Han Solo's homeworld, to help Morak with the final transport for the Eye of Scion. Ahsoka and Hera then arrive on Corellia as well to discuss Morgan Elsbeth's production on transport ships. So then we're back on Lothal. Sabine tells Hu Yang that it's Ahsoka's fault she couldn't keep up with Shin. You know, failed her in training, didn't complete her in training. And then Hu Yang had to let Sabine know, you know, those are excuses. That's a horrible way to go about it. If you want to learn, you go learn. That's not the Jedi way. If you want to learn the ways, then you have to act the ways. And then the so-called ex-Imperial crew that's on Corellia then tells Ahsoka and Hera that they had fled and the ship is actually stolen. Hera then chases the transport in the Phantom 2. Beautiful fall-off ship. We love to see this back. And while this is going on, Ahsoka fights Morak. It's the scene from the trailer very very nice looking inquisitor this is a good battle and from what we believe morak is actually the last standing inquisitor the transport makes a jump to hyperspace but before it jumps chopper throws a tracking device on it as always choppers coming through morak then flees the scene from ahsoka and leaves with shin shin has approached sabine gets her mandalorian armor back on cuts her hair now she is ready for combat. So now Sabine and Ahsoka are back on track. There's no beef anymore. They're ready. They hop in the T6 shuttle. They fly into hyperspace onto the following mission. Then at the end of the episode, Morgan Elsbeth is seen at the Eye of Scion. This is what's going to get Thrawn back into the galaxy that we know. But this shows the stolen hyperdrive and it is actually added into the Eye of Scion. And it seems that this is the last piece that they needed. But then Balin also shows a little mercy for Ahsoka, knowing that she's one of the few remaining Jedi. So maybe Balin has a change of heart during the Ahsoka series? I don't know. We'll see what happens. But with that episode wrapping up, I definitely give episode 2 a 10 out of 10. It's on a 2 for 2 streak for me. I don't see anything wrong so far. These episodes are looking really good. Dave Filoni has came through. Like I say... Let Filoni cook. Dave Filoni is the closest thing we have to George Lucas, so you know the storytelling will be impeccable. We are getting an impeccable story so far. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Hit subscribe. Hit the like button. Let me know that this breakdown is really good. This is the first one of the Ahsoka season. Here we go, guys. Ahsoka's here. But with that being said, guys, thank you for tuning in. We'll see you in the next breakdown. We'll see you in the next video. Have a good rest of your day. Have a good week. May the force be with you. Brandalorian, I'm out.